Greetings from Peoria, Arizona, specifically Spirit of Hope United Methodist Church. It's good to be here with you again. My name is uh, Deborah Schauer, and I am the pastor of the good people here at this church, Spirit of Hope United Methodist Church, again, located in Peoria, Arizona. I say these things because I never know who may check in with us to view this video. So I now say to you, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Again, I use these various greetings to come to you. For I know, know exactly when you might want to come and join us. But I come to you from the quietness of our worship center to film yet again another message that will hopefully bring you peace, provide you with some words of understanding, maybe insight, encouragement, to give you hope, maybe even create a smile on your face. And also within your soul as we come together through the internet to worship our God today. What a remarkable week we have experienced. Right now, the monsoons are starting to come into our valley, which show, oh, yeah, we're excited about. That's probably the most exciting thing that we've have, has happened lately. My week has been pretty calm, you know, formulating our worship service and preparing my sermon, um, connecting with some of you through uh, phone calls, Zoom meetings, making mass for you, Mom, and Golden Gate community center, heart pantry, or whoever might need one. I know uh, we cannot wait until, oh, that time when we will uh, have, uh, will experience a very calm and tranquil week where things might uh, be kind of back to normal. Of course, we're all wondering if uh, normal will ever be the same. But until that time, I, like you, will continue to pray uh, that hearts will be softened and truths will be exposed. In our world, that seems to be constantly changing. We can find hope in the fact that God doesn't change. God's love is the same, and for that we can have hope. Now, even though I know we'd much rather come together in this place of worship to see each other's face, keeping that social distancing, 
But we all understand that for our safety and well-being, we um, uh, have been doing worship differently. That is, that we're not really interacting as we normally do on Sunday mornings. But again, we hold tight to the knowledge that we will come together with each other sometime in the future. But that doesn't stop us from connecting in other ways. Yeah, we are doing that. And so now I just want to share with you some things that are going on within your church that you may know about and maybe you don't know about, but you are encouraged to join us. Since I'm not sure exactly when you are watching this video, I invite you to uh, come to your computer, your tablet, your smartphone on Sundays at 10 a.m. for a Zoom meeting. That is basically a gathering together and, and checking in with each other. Also, it's a time of all prayer. Right. Well, I'm, I'm an invitation and will be sent um, um, to so all the emails that we have, those that are if really connected with Spirit your, of Hope. Um, um, uh, but screen, everyone is welcome to join in this gathering, but we do need that, your email so that we can send you an invitation. Morning, so if you want to join us, please... Send your email address to Spirit of Hope, UMC, at yahoo.com, and we will send out this invitation to you. Something else is happening, too, this week coming up. This third Thursday, which is July 30th, from 9 a.m. to 6, oh, 9 a.m. to 11 uh, a.m., and then also from 4 to 6 in the early afternoon, we will be here. Um, collecting more school supplies, but this time it's going to be for Golden Gate Community Center. That's the organization that every December we provide Christmas gifts for the kids that are connected with this center. Well, now they also need those back-to-school supplies. They're going to be having a health fair on um, August 1st. So they're inviting uh, their kids to come there, and at that time, they're going to hopefully hand out all these great school supplies to them. So if you can run again to Staples, Home, um, Office Max, Walmart, any place, they're all over the place, the dollar store, and, and pick up some supplies. The list is on our website of the things that they need. One thing that's different that they need um, that wasn't really asked for with a heart pantry is they need do- deodorant for men and women. So those kids need that deodorant too. The other thing that's going to be happening this week, this Thursday, is that there will be a Zoom Leadership Council meeting on Thursday, again, at 6.30 p.m. All are invited to this too, but... Um, Again, you have to get an invitation. So you, uh, you, if you want to join us, um, I ask you to send the invitation, I mean, send your email address to a different one. It's basically the pastor's email address, which is sohpastor at gmail.com. So if you would like an invite to come to our leadership where we're trying to figure out exactly um, how we're going to all come together again what does that look like how are we going to strategically plan that come and join us or you can send even your concerns to us at that email address that i just gave to you so those are kind of the announcements that i have for you right now so i think we need to prepare our hearts for worship As Christians, it's important that we truly humbly realize that we really don't know how to pray as we ought to. Nor are we able to pray um, as we ought by our own ability. Ah, To have a good time of prayer, it is the responsibility of the Holy Spirit to really step into our lives to teach us to pray. 
to enable us to pray as we ought to. With that in mind, I think it's vital for us to spend some time each day, not only today as we come together during this time of worship, but we need to come together each day where we allow the Holy Spirit to enter into our our being. And then we just need to be. So let's pray through the use of of this video. May your souls be lifted as you hear this music and read what is before you in this video entitled, This is Our Prayer. So now, with the confidence that we experience as children of God, let us pray this prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. Philip went down to a city in Samaria and proclaimed the Christ there. When the crowds heard Philip and saw the miraculous signs he did, they all paid close attention to what he said. With shrieks, evil spirits came out of many, and many paralytics and cripples were healed. So there was great joy in that city. Now for some time, a man named Simon had practiced sorcery in the city and amazed all the people of Samaria. He boasted that he was someone great, and all the people, both high and low, gave him their attention and exclaimed, This man is the divine Pa, known as the great Pa. They followed him because he had amazed them for a long time with his magic. But when they believed Philip as he preached the good news of the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Simon himself believed and was baptized, and he followed Philip everywhere, astonished by the great signs and miracles he saw. When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. 
When they arrived, they prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit had not yet come upon any of them. They had simply been baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John placed their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. When Simon saw that the Spirit was given at the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money and said, Give me also this ability so that everyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Peter answered, May your money perish with you, because you thought you could buy the gift of God with money. You have no part or share in this ministry, because your heart is not right before God. Repent of this wickedness and pray to the Lord. Perhaps he will forgive you for having such a thought in your heart. For I see that you are full of bitterness and captive to sin. Then Simon answered, Pray to the Lord for me, so that nothing you have said may happen to me. When they had testified and proclaimed the word of the Lord, Peter and John returned to Jerusalem, preaching the gospel in many Samaritan villages. This video that we just saw, oh, it's the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Everything is figureoutable. That's the title of a book by Marie Forleo. She's an amazing woman, a, a very much self-made woman. This phrase, though, did not originate from her. It, it, it came from her mother, who was also a very amazing woman. Marie tells her readers that her mother has the tenacity of a bulldog, looks like June Cleaver, and curses like a truck driver. Marie's mother taught her how to stretch a dollar uh, bill around the block and um, is one of the most resourceful and industrious people anyone could ever meet. After experiencing yet another amazement, uh, amazing accomplishment by her mother, Maria asked her, how do you know how to do so many different things that you've never done before without anyone showing you how to do it? Well, at that moment, Marie's mother put down her screwdriver, turned to Marie and said, don't be silly. Nothing is in life is that complicated. You can do whatever you set your mind to if you just roll up your sleeves, get in there and do it. Everything is figure outable. Great words of wisdom. Now, the whole purpose for Marie to write this book was to inspire others to adopt the extremely powerful belief that everything is figureoutable. Today, as we look into the formation of that early church and continue on with our sermon series, Acts, the rest of the story, we read about a man who understood that everything is figureoutable. His name was Philip. Philip uh, appears early on in the story of this early church, for as we read in chapter 6, he is appointed, along with six other men, to be part of the lay leaders in the early church, in charge of organizing the food ministry. Now, to understand Philip's story, you have to understand what's really going on in the church during this time. The seventh chapter of Acts ends with the stoning of Stephen, the first Christian martyr. Again, the first of many. And then the next chapter begins on a very somber note. Hear these words <clears throat> with the beginning with the verses from chapter 8. Saul approved of their killing. That day was uh, a de that day a severe 
persecution began against the church in Jerusalem. And all except the apostles were scattered through the countryside of Judea and Samaria. Devote men, d- buried Stephen and made loud lamentation over him. But Saul was ravaging the church by entering house after house, dragging off both men and women. He committed them to prison. Now those who were scattered went from place to place, proclaiming the word. Throughout history, on a a personal or corporate level, we discover how God often mm, brings something good out of something bad. Oh, there's a bunch of, here we have a bunch of newly converted uh, Christians who are basking in the light of God's mercy and grace, trying to live transformed lives when hardship enters into their world. The first persecution of the early church begins, and these early forerunners of our faith must have thought to themselves, what in the world is going on here? Come on, God! You know, I'm trying to do what's right, what Jesus told us to do. So why do we have to fight these battles? But God wasn't really done yet. As something good came from something bad, helping them to realize that everything is figureoutable. This concept almost seemed to be on belief. I I know in my life that when something bad happens, I'm not often uh, jumping up and saying, wow, wow, that was really bad. I can't wait to see how much good can come from this. Most don't think that way. You know, I'm optimistic, but not that optimistic. God's word, though, tells us that God is working behind the scenes. That uh, God's going to make things right for us. For those who call on Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, there is always hope. In her book, The Hiding Place, Corey Tim Bloom relates uh, an incident that taught her to be thankful for everything. We, uh, we normally would not really be very thankful for. She and her sister, Betsy, became prisoners of the Nazis, and they were being transferred to the worst prison camp uh, they'd seen yet, Ravensbrück. Upon entering the barracks, they found them extremely overcrowded and infested with fleas. Their scripture readings from their smuggled Bibles that morning was uh, 1 Thessalonians, come from there, which told them to rejoice always, pray continuously, and give thanks in all circumstances. Betsy told Corey to stop and thank God for every detail of their living quarters. Corey, at first, flatly refused to give thanks for the fleas, but Betsy persisted, and Corey finally agreed to somehow thank God for those fleas. Or during the months spent at that camp, they were surprised at how Openly, they could hold their Bible studies and their prayer meetings in the barracks without guards interfering at all. Several months later, they learned that the guards would not enter the barracks because of the fleas. You know, we, we don't always know why bad things happen, but we do know that we're not alone in our struggles. What was the good that came from the bad in this story, from our scripture reading that we are looking at today. 
well, I, to begin, the church basically went from being local to being global. Remember the words Jesus left them with. He told them, you are my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere in Jeru- Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. The church was growing by leaps and bounds, but they were centralized in Jerusalem, forgetting those important words that Jesus shared with them. They were growing up, but they really weren't growing out. The good news of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection was not just a message for the Jews in Jerusalem. It was meant for all of humanity. You know, right now, the church uh, everywhere is experiencing growing pains. Because of COVID-19, we must do worship and ministry differently. And, And we're all struggling with figuring out how to do it differently. But everything is figure outable. God loves us as we are, but loves us too much to let us stay that way. The goal of every Christian is growth. Trials stretch us. They make us rely more on God and less on ourselves. God used the persecution in Jerusalem so that Christians would take his life-giving message elsewhere and then into all the world. God was helping them realize that everything is figureoutable. So Philip decides to leave his familiar surroundings. It's interesting that Philip doesn't go to a more familiar town where friends may live, but instead God led him to the capital city of Samaria, a city with rich history, but a place no good Jew would ever have gone if they could really avoid it. You see, the Samaritans were viewed as half breeze, uh, being half Jewish and half pagan. Most Jewish people were disgusted by their distant cousins, holding them in contempt, and often were in brutal conflict with them. Simply put, they were prejudiced against the Samaritans. And God was sending Philip uh, with a story of hope, healing, and acceptance to change a broken and lost people. The crowds listened intently to Philip because uh, they were eager to hear his message. Oh, and also they saw these beautiful uh, and miraculous signs that he did. Evil spirits were cast out, screaming as they left their victims. Many who had been paralyzed or lame were healed. Lives are changed. Relationships are restored. Grudges are forgotten, and sin, sins are forgiven. A revival erupted. Great joy was experienced throughout that city, but then something else happened. As Philip is preaching and ministering throughout the city, someone else comes on to the scene, a man by the name of Simon also amazed the people with his magical powers and gained for himself a very comfortable living with his fabulous reputation. On the strength of his alleged powers, Simon had established himself as a sort of local mystic, and his followers revered him, considering him the great power of God. You see, within the Jewish culture, power is a respectful substitute for God. Simon had flung a a spell of his personality over the city, claiming himself to be a great man. 
The path of these two men might have never crossed if it wasn't for Simon wanting something that Philip had, or so he thought. Simon recognized Philip was a competitor and possessed a power greater than his own. The story line becomes even more complex as Peter and John arrive in the city. With the decline of the persecution of the Christians in Jerusalem, news reached the apostle of the success that Philip was experiencing in Samaria. This departure of preaching to those who are aliens from the commonwealth of Israel was not viewed by the Jewish Christians with enthusiasm. It appears that, oh, Hebrew believers did carry over with them into their new relationship with Christ these old prejudices against all things outside the Hebrew experience. Yet since, since the Samaritans oh, worship the same God, and oh, well, they were a little stricter in their observance of the law than the Jews, perhaps, Hmm. The disciples in Jerusalem considered them religiously far superior to the Gentiles. So Peter and John seem to have been officially appointed by the church in Jerusalem to look into the matter. Basically, they're sending out the big guns. <laughs> you know, we're not told whether Philip was still in the city when Peter and John arrived. But upon their arrival, they observed the deficiency in the experience of these believers. Now, even though they had been baptized with water, no presence of the Holy Spirit was in their lives. Peter and John arrived to save the day. They prayed that the people might receive the Holy Spirit, and they did. This action also provides divine approval for evangelizing the Samaritans. You know, we need to, to look somewhat carefully at this story to see what Peter and John actually did. They prayed for them. They laid hands upon them, and then the people received the Holy Spirit. Peter knew, oh, full well, that the Spirit had not fallen upon these men and women by the laying on of his hands. But that's what Simon thought as he saw Peter perform. Ah, but Peter knew and declared that it was the gift of God. Simon the magician comes before us again after the outpouring of the Spirit, seeing what the apostles were capable of accomplishment by the imposition of hands. His professional interest was revived, and Simon wanted to purchase this power so that he could make money through its use. His attitude was strictly materialistic. The evil request of Simon originated, oh, this new word in religious circles known as simony, which means the fulfillment of the ecclesiastical position by means of money. Peter reprimanded Simon for daring to make such a request and called on him to repent so that he could be forgiven. Apparently, Peter had described some uh, terrible things which would happen to him as a, a judgment from God because Simon asked Peter, oh, to please pray for him, that nothing, oh, nothing of what he said would come upon him. Simon heard the gospel, saw the miracles, gave a profession of faith in Christ, was baptized, and yet it appears he wasn't truly born again. 
He did not grasp the concept of figure outable. You know, these stories that we find in Acts are interesting, true tales of the origin of our church, and and we learn some things from them. But above all, let us all remember, nothing in life is that complicated. We can do whatever we set our minds on if we roll up our sleeves, get in there and do it, for everything is figureoutable. The early church did it, and so can we, because we have God on our side. May God, through the Holy Spirit, inspire each one of us to figure it out. Amen. You know, with God, all things are possible. Everything is figureoutable. May you carry that confidence into your daily life and work as you walk in Christ's footsteps, guided by God's hand. Amen. So God bless you all, and have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.